Good afternoon, welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room, and welcome to the first ever episode of Battle of the Blasters. I decided to do a new series where I compare blasters to see which one's the best at a specific goal. Since a lot of blasters are made very similarly or trying to accomplish similar goals, I figure why don't we put two very similar blasters up against each other and finally figure out which one does its job better. And in today's episode, we're doing the most obvious comparison that everyone wants to know about right now, the Strifex versus the Dart Zone Maxim Pro. Let's get into it. <music> corner weighing in at 120 United States dollars powered by a 3S lipo included in the box we have the Nerf Pro Strifex and in this corner weighing in at just 40 United States dollars available on store shelves at Walmart powered by eight AA batteries, which are sold separately, we have the Dark Zone Maxim Pro. The way this show works is we're first going to compare these blasters similarities, and then we're going to take a look at the unique features each one brings to the table and see which one is better based off of the interesting features that they have. Both of these blasters are flywheel semi-automatic magazine fed blasters, which are mainly designed to be used with talon mags or mags with similar geometry to talon mags and not really designed to use any other type of mag except for the part where the Maxim Pro is compatible with Coda mags and the Dart Zone Pro mags that were sold before these new generation of Dart Zone blasters, but I digress. They are also both a very similar size, almost being the exact same size, down to the millimeter when it comes to length, when it comes to width, when it comes to height. They're very similarly sized. The only difference in size is when you actually put the 3S on the Strife X, it sticks out a substantial amount up to about here. But even then, it isn't that big of a blaster, and I don't think the size really counts that much when you have the batteries in this. Plus, if you're going to put a 3S in the Maxim, you would have to get an extended battery door anyways. Let's take a look at each of these blasters pros, starting with the Strife X. And the first most obvious glaring pro that this blaster has over the Maxim is this right here, the 3S LiPo that is included out of the box. This LiPo is idiot proof. And what I mean by that is the fact that it is built with safety controls inside that prevent you from being able to blow it up accidentally and reduce the need for an expensive charger. And yes, LiPo chargers can get pretty dang expensive. And if you don't want to invest in them, this one specifically can be powered just using a USB-C cable. I feel like these should come with any random Nerf blaster that is being sold using a LiPo, and I don't think that's too reasonable to ask for, or too unreasonable to ask for. But the bigger reason why this is so universally loved is the fact that it makes dealing with the batteries as effortless as possible. You literally just plug the battery right onto the side of the blaster, it fits, and your Strife X is ready to go. No screwdriver needed, no double A's. To remove it, you just pull it off using this little double finger setup right here. It is a massive, massive convenience being able to use this LiPo without having to worry about anything else. Another pro of the Strife X is the internal build quality and the external build quality even. This blaster is made out of stuff. And what I mean by that is it's made out of very high quality parts that are built to last a very long time. The motors, the quality of the cage, the quality of the wheels, the wiring, the micro switch, the plastic shell, everything about the Strife X is made to last a very, very long time. Nothing about this blaster was cheaped out, not from the beginning and not now. This blaster is a very, very well-made one and is designed to be used with no issues whatsoever. I would totally feel comfortable getting this blaster and just immediately driving down to my local game to use it. No mods, no nothing. Just buy the blaster and it works. Now let's take a look at the pros of the Dart Zone Maxim. First of all, the accessibility. This blaster is not exclusive online. You can go down to Walmart and just pull this thing off the shelf and pay for it and leave. It's a blaster that is way easier to get your hands on than the Strife X, and not just because of the physical accessibility, but also the pricing accessibility. The Strife X is $120. That is pretty expensive. This one rounds to $40, which is a whole lot more reasonable. And even on Nerf scope of things, a regular Strife costs $35. You pay $5 more and you can get this one, which shoots 150 FPS, which is a pretty compelling argument, all things considered. 
Another pro is the magwell that this blaster has. One, it's flared, and two, it is a lot more generous fitting talons in. With the Pro Strife X, it is a very tight magwell, and it is pretty restricting to put talons in. While this blaster has a very nice magwell, a very crispy magwell, that you can mag drop just by hitting the mag release, which makes a lot of sense and is done pretty well on this blaster. Even though the Strife X comes with the LiPo, this blaster features an XT30 connector hidden behind the AA battery tray, which which means that you can use any form of 3S that happens to use XT30 that you already have at home. Contrary to the Strife X, which instead of using an XT60 or XT30 connector, instead uses this proprietary pin connector. These little metal pins fit into these slots, and that is how the battery is powered. So if you wanted to use any other battery, you would still have to open and rewire the blaster for a 2S or 3S like you would any other random Strife. While this blaster already comes with an XT30, and if you don't happen to have any XT30 battery, it is compatible with double A's right out of the box. So the accessibility of the battery kind of balances out with both. But I would argue that this one is objectively better than the Strife X when it comes to the battery connectivity because it works with LiPos and you weren't stuck with the LiPo that the blaster comes with. And finally, this blaster uses Picatinny rails. It is a slight thing, but the Nerf Pro Strife X using rival rails makes it very restrictive on what attachments you can use without modifying the rails into Picatinny rails using externally 3D printed attachments to change the rails onto Picatinny rails. This one comes with Picatinny rails, one on the top and one on the bottom. It's pretty simple, though it is in the same way as the Strife X, and even then, these rails are better than the rails that the Strife X has in the first place, since the top Picatinny rail goes across the entire top of the blaster rather than just stopping like right about here and having a jam door in the front. Now let's wrap things up with a little bit of subjective input from me personally so that it doesn't really impede on these blaster scores but still gives you a little bit more insight. I personally like the Strife X's rev trigger more. I think that it's better having a traditional rev trigger like this rather than having the large like 1911 style safety rev trigger that the Maxim Pro has. But I think that the Maxim Pro has a better refined main trigger than the Strife X due to the fact that the Maxim uses a regular linkage system rather than an analog gear rack. This one does feel better, but this is also a lot more difficult to manage if it breaks. While this one, you could just replace the linkage and make it work. So. Which one of these blasters is better in the long run? The answer? The Strife X. While it cannot be overstated that the Maxim is definitely important to the hobby right now, being a good, comfortable project blaster that you can get for $40 to make a nice 3S mod off of, I cannot overstate the quality of the Strife X. This blaster is built very, very well. If not just for the plastic quality, the internals are far more refined than the Maxim's. The Maxim has only been out for a week, and already tons upon tons of people have come out saying that their blasters have burnt out. Well, while this blaster has been out over a year, and never once have I heard any cases of burnout or even any cases of mechanical stuff breaking on the Strife X. Despite how much more expensive it is, I would rather wait and get a Strife X rather than settling for a Maxim right now, because this is a blaster that I fully trust and I trust to work for a very, very long time. While the Maxim I know could break at any random moment, and there's no saying how long this blaster will last, even on double A's. They burn out on double A's too. That's kind of a really big deal when this blaster, yes, it costs more, but there's never been any case of it burning out or screwing up or anything like that. And this blaster has been out for a week and it's already been burning out like it's nobody's business. It's literally the Omnia 2.0. If you do plan on modding these blasters, I don't think it really matters which one you pick, but I still would rather go with the Strife X because the shell quality is better than the Maxim Pro. So with all that said, thank you for watching this first episode of Battle of the Blasters. Let me know what you guys think in the comments and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!